Welcome back to Cult Radio at GoGo Live, and we're here with our next guest of the evening, who is here to tell us about a very exciting event that's coming up next weekend. In addition to talking about her fabulous career, Miss Laura Parker, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. I will have you know that I missed so much school because of you. <laughs> well, shame on you. <laughs> So let us know all about this fantastic thing that's coming up next weekend because it really is a stellar event and, and a thing that's that's really exciting for everyone. Not that it wasn't exciting before, but Jonathan Frid's actually showing up, which that's right. hasn't Jonathan happened in a while. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, it's just it's the Dark Shadows Festival, and we have one every year, and every other year it's in L.A. Mm-hmm. It's in New York or it's in Los Angeles. So this is Los Angeles' t- turn, and um, we're very fortunate because Jonathan does not come. He hasn't actually come in a long, long time. And he came last year to New York, and he had such a great time. He enjoyed himself so much. He loved all the attention. He sort of turned his back on Dark Shadows for around 10, 12, I don't know how many years. But he said, I'll come to California. So we're all thrilled that he will be there. And... Um, we're looking forward to it. It's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and uh, it's at the Burbank Marriott at the airport in Burbank. Absolutely. And just for any of the listeners out there that are wanting details about this, um, as Laura said, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, July 18th through the 20th at the Burbank Airport Marriott Hotel and Convention Center at 2500 Hollywood Way. And uh, the Marriott's uh, phone number, if you need to contact them, is 818-843-6000. Um, and you guys are going to have a whole slew of people down there. But, of course, everyone wants to come down to meet you, Laura. You need to tell us all about playing. Actually, you played three, about three different characters on the soap, right? Well, the main one was the witch, Angelique. Right. Yeah, that was the main one. That's, I suppose, the one uh, most people remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I have sometimes trouble remembering. <laughs> so. That's crazy, too. Know. Like, the fans will come up and they'll be like, do you remember in episode 54? And you're like, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. They say, what were you doing when you walked into that room and that head appeared? And then you took out that knife? And then uh, the walls all started burning? What, what was going on there? And I'll say, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the fans are wonderful. Dark Shadows has the has the best fans in the world. They're all loyal. They are very loving and dear, and they care a lot about the show. And they're really the ones that are responsible for the fact that it's uh, that we still have the, the conventions and that people are still buying the DVDs and that Johnny Depp is planning to do a play Barnabas and do a Dark Shadows movie. I mean, the fact that this show has stayed alive all these years and continued to garner fans, mm-hmm. and I mean, we have people come up who who introduce their children and their grandchildren to the show. Yeah, yeah. And they look at me and they go, "Oh no, you're not her." Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that was a situation with us. Uh, we're father and daughter team, and I'm 51. Uh-huh. My uh-huh. daughter's in her mid 20s, and I certainly introduced her to Dark Shadows, and right. she couldn't believe that a soap opera actually did what you guys did. I mean, it was so I strange know. for the day. You know, I can't believe it either. I, I, I the last, last, um, last, last summer in New York, I turned, we were watching some clips from the show. They always show clips during the question and answer sessions and at the banquet and, and some of them are really choice. You know, they, they find ones that they haven't shown in a long time. And I was there with Catherine and Scott, and we were watching them. And I said, you know, I turned to her and I said, you know, Dark Shadows just gets better and better and better. (laughs) Because in a strange way, because there was no show like it. Right. Right. It was unique. They've never done it. They came close with Buffy, but even Buffy had a different tone. It It was serious. It was romantic. And it was also scary. So it it was a great combination. Absolutely. Well, you you must still have the magic because we've got a storm is brewing up outside the studio. Here. I'm hearing lightning as we speak. That's very strange. We don't get yes, those too well, often. I, here. I thought I'd bring that along. <laughs> now, what, from what I understand, I mean, you had moved to New York to pursue acting, and you got Dark Shadows like within two weeks of being there. Yes, I was so lucky. I got it. Um, I'd done a lot of acting, and I'd done a lot of stock. 
summer theater. And right. I've done, worked in the university theater and in the community theater in my hometown in Memphis. So I've been acting for ever since I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And um, I'd always wanted to go to New York. I'd always wanted to go to New York and, and just see if I had any luck. And I I was doing um, summer start, summer stock in in Pennsylvania, and uh, I was close enough to New York City to just sort of take the train over there and stay for a few weeks to see if, you know, anything happened, which was it was actually ridiculous because nothing ever happens. That right, right. And uh, I, I just, I got very lucky. I got very lucky and I ended up on this soap opera that I had never heard of, and and uh, it was my job for the next five years. I did other things, and then I came out to to California and did um, a lot of episodic TV. So right. Um, but and one of the few, if not the only, that actually did the Night Stalker, which is another great Dan Curtis show. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. I did one episode of the Night Stalker. <laughs> Well, and that was fun. <laughs> well, you know, I must ask. Everybody's prompting me in, in the chat room. Now we got a chat room going. We got a, a big audience tonight. You have no idea how much of a draw you have. <laughs> I, I had a double bill tonight with you and Betsy Palmer for Friday the Thirteenth. Let me tell you, <laughs> That's great. The ratings is out the roof. But they want to know. Okay, Night of Dark Shadows, the movie that you did as Angelique, uh, didn't meet with too many great reviews because unfortunately MGM cut about thirty-five minutes out of the film, and I understand now. Sense, yeah. yeah, and there's a there's like a plan to like recreate to to put that that footage back in. Is is anything happened with that or? Yes, they've done that. Oh wow! Uh, I don't know what they plan to do with it. Probably it'll be a DVD. But <laughs> yes, we I actually went in last year and redubbed scenes that they'd lost the sound to that they're putting back in. I think. I don't know whether, I think one of the stumbling blocks was getting uh, Grayson Hall, mm-hmm. who played Julia, um, because she's passed away, and they needed to get someone to do her voice, because some of the footage, they'd lost the sound. Mm-hmm. Right. But I think they've managed to put it back together again. Uh, as far as I know, it's done. Well, how hard That'll was that fun, won't it? It, to get how back into character, it? you know, because <laughs> after so long? How hard was it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't hard. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, she's my second nature. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, a lot of people in our in our chat room are wanting to make sure that we take a moment to tell you that they would like to say thank you to you for um, kind of continuing on what they call continuing on the Dark Shadows legacy because you are actually you actually write some Dark Shadows novels. I've written two, and I'm working on a third. And they want to know when it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, they said, well, the oh, last one was a, was a couple of years ago, so when's the next one coming out? Uh, these things take a while to write. I, I can imagine. Homework. It's 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 so hard to make myself sit down and do it. You know, mm-hmm. I, have, I have a full life, and I have a family. I have a new grandchild. You know, oh. it's, it's, it's hard for me to be disciplined, but I'm starting to... Um, um, Let's say I'm starting to do you know the outline and write some of the chapters. So I, once I get started, it'll probably just take about six or eight months. But I haven't really gotten down to the grind yet. Uh, I should I should do that. Now the first book is out of print now and is actually out on like audio CD, right? Uh, there is an audio CD, and it's um, it's about a hundred pages of the novel. I mean, it's it's you know drastically abridged. But it's, I guess you could say it's the good sections. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Angelique's Descent, and there are just dozens and dozens of copies of it available on, you know, used Amazon and and, AO, and um, eBay. I mean, they just show up all the time. You can pick one up for 12 to $15 if you really want one. Right. And I'm trying to get Tor to reprint it. They told me they wanted me to write one more chapter, so he might do that for me. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's fantastic that you're doing this because back when Dark Shadows was actually on, I, I used to read all those little paperbacks. Was it Marilyn Ross that put them out or yes, something? Yes. Yeah. Of course, a completely different style of acting. I right. mean, writing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she's he actually. Uh, oh, it's a he. I thought it was a woman all this long. Yeah, uh, he's um, he. It was. You know, very straightforward kind of cartoon writing, whereas mm-hmm. I tried, a, 
I've tried a little harder to make it more literary, you know, to get to weave in themes and uh, layers and uh, uh, some some interesting language and research. The first book, I did a lot of research on, on the Caribbean and the sugar trade and uh, the slave trade and... and that was I think that made the book really interesting and then and I went to the Caribbean a number of times and and, and then the second book, uh, The Salem Branch, I did a lot of research on uh the Salem witch trials and um in sixteen ninety two and how they have you know, what how they affected um the, the new world at that time and and it, it, that was really wonderful because I was able to actually read the transcripts from the trials. They wrote the transcripts down when they tried these these women who were not witches. Right. So it was, you know, I think that the, both of these books have more heft. I think they have more value than uh, just the, the dark shadows paperbacks that were written a long time ago. Right, right. Did you ever think that, I know this is a crazy question, did you ever think that maybe in another life, because I'm going to tell you, I know you're an actress, but, oh man, you were so good at being bad, I mean, those <laughs> eyes of yours, I, I've never seen more beautiful eyes in my life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is acting, I have to say, it, it, you know, and, and the, thing that, the thing that people do not realize is that it, it, you're scared, and you're tense, and uh, you're trying desperately to remember where your marks are and which way yeah. to turn. And I was always hoping that Jonathan Fred didn't forget his lines, and we had very little rehearsal. So I think a lot of the uh, tension that you feel in the performance was actually the, the actor's tension. <laughs> it, it, do you understand what I mean? I right. mean yes. It, yeah. it, was, it was translated into my scary eyes. I don't know. Because it was it was very hard to do. We were, we all felt that we were not really prepared. And it was live it was very too, hard right? To relax. It, was it was live. It wasn't live, but it might as well have been live. Yeah. It was taped live, and every mistake we made went on the air. Every every fly on the nose and right. uh, <laughs> every stone that fell over, and every wall that shook when you slammed the door, and, and you know all these things would happen. You know, you'd light a match and start to cast a spell, and the match would just go out. <laughs> <laughs> Or the opposite, you know, you'd start to burn down a house of cards and it would explode in your face. I mean, we never really knew what to expect. So a lot of times we were just winging it and it right. all went on the air. And then there's, there's all the great stories, like, like Catherine uh, said a story that uh, she was supposed to be a vampire and they didn't have the fangs or something. I don't know what the deal was, but like they put like uh, false fingernails where her... Right, on her yeah. teeth. Right. Wow. <laughs> but I, I think that was probably one of the things that made Dark Shadows so endearing because... First of all, you could relate to it, you know, because it's it's kind of, I mean, it was a drama, of course, but it was kind of more real life and seeing all those things. And second of all, it really was... Real life? What kind of life do you live? You know what I mean. <laughs> and second of all, it really was like the closest thing you could get to seeing live theater on your television. Yeah, that's for sure. It, it had that feel of live theater. It right. really did. And, and there is a special kind of excitement. And because we tried to do so much. I mean, in other soap operas, you know, they put a couple of people around the kitchen table and they talk. Yeah. You know, where we were telling ghosts to return to their graves and dealing with uh, slime and werewolves and and Frankenstein and just, I mean, it was packed with plot. And um, we just covered a lot of territory. And, and and we always took it completely seriously. We didn't play it for laughs. We didn't play it for, for camp. Right. Never played it tongue-in-cheek. Never made fun of it. We played it strongly for real so it was really really happening to us and i think it 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 gave it a dimension of theatricality plus a lot of the actors were stage actors i was a stage actor Mm -hmm. so we were more used to doing um larger than life life characters and uh there's just a lot of things that work together that created the magic of the show that i think made it unique and uh but as I said to Catherine, it just seems to get better every year because <laughs> when we first did the show, uh, we finished taping and then we'd all go into the, to a little uh, sort of green room where they had a TV and mm-hmm. we'd watch the show that we had done the week before. And of course, it was still very strong in our memories, all the mistakes that we had made and the, right. 
the times we you know we'd gone up on our lines and and bumped into the scenery, and so we'd be <laughs> sitting there watching it and just cringing. Just, oh no! Oh dear! Oh, it's the worst performance I ever gave in my whole life. But thank goodness it's gone. It's gone. Never to return. Nobody will ever have to see that again. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and we, of course, we had no idea that it was going to endlessly repeat. <laughs> well, I must say, you know, I, I kind of like the series with Ben Cross too. Did you did you like that at all? Oh, I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was so beautiful. And it just it, it just got ruined by the Gulf War. Oh, and yeah. All of the things that were happening at that time. It got moved all around. It was lush. It was romantic. It was shadowy, dark shadows. It was, you know, dark. And, and the performances were wonderful. I thought Joanna Going was just beautiful. I really did believe that it was going to have a five-year run. I just, you know, it's just... Show business can be lucky or unlucky. Yeah. Now, as far as this this new film that's in the works with Johnny Depp, of course, uh, taking on the role of Barnabas, has there been any word as to who's going to play Angelique? No, no. We just we just have our fingers crossed that it actually happens. Who do you think should play Angelique? Of all the actors uh, are, that's available now, actresses. <laughs> She's like, wow, me. <laughs> well, you you know the one that that played Angelique in the Ben Cross series. Her name was Lissette Anthony, I believe it was. Uh, Lissette, she was wonderful. Oh, yeah. she's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, there is an actress, but I can't think of her name. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That happens a lot here. <laughs> uh, but Angelique is tough because yeah. um, that I think Lissette's she fell into the trap of playing the evil. You can't play the evil. You know, you have to play the righteousness. Yes. You have to play the reasons for being evil. And Angelique's evil covers up her heartbreak. And uh, it's her way. It's her driving force. The heartbreak is her driving force, not exactly. her evil. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you, uh, you know, Barnabas is not, I'm, I realize he was distinguished in Regal, but he really wasn't that smart. Because <laughs> all he had to do is love Angelique and it wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> But I yeah, know, why not? Writers, Angelique was beautiful. <laughs> he was so stubborn. I, I said Ange- he, Barnabas was stupid. Angelique was beautiful. I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 the triangle. It always works. Of course, yeah. it keeps the people watching. And we didn't understand it either. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> if we'd gone off into you know dreamland, that would have been in the end of the show. So. Yeah. So what is your personal opinions of, of Johnny Depp as, as Barnabas Collins? Wonderful, wonderful, okay. wonderful. He'll be wonderful. He's going to bring definite new life because he's such a star. Oh, he'll bring, it'll be a completely different characterization. Yeah. And it'll be marvelous, you know, especially if Tim Burton directs. I mean, it'll be marvelous. I just hope they come up with a script that is worthy of the show. Now, if they come in and ask you to do a, a cameo, would you be willing you know, I think that that was likely for a number of years. I, of course, I would, but um, I, I don't think it's likely. You know, I just think uh, uh, <laughs> it would be a stretch for them to come up with something. You know, yeah, maybe I could play some kind of old crone. I don't know. Oh, come Stop on. No, I've seen you. you still look as beautiful as you did. <laughs> sure. And you've got a wonderful family. I guess you have a son as a music producer. I do, Rick Parker. He's uh, he's uh, produced uh, a number of well-known bands. He's uh, I don't know whether you've ever heard of the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, but he did two of their records. And his wife, Miranda Lee Richards, is her album is coming out October the second. Miranda, she's my daughter-in-law. And it's her second album, and it's a beautiful, beautiful album. And uh, you know, they both have websites, Rick Parker, Parker and Miranda Lee Richards, and so uh, they're kind of my extended show business. Uh, I live vicariously through them. <laughs> and then I have another son, Andy Parker, and he's the one that's the father of the new baby. Oh, well, congratulations, seven, by the way. Seven months old yesterday. Aww. So. That baby will have such fun growing up saying, Grandma was a witch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I just love him so much. <laughs> Wonderful. And then I have a daughter, Katie Hawkins, who just graduated from uh, uh, Philadelphia School of the Arts, and so she's back in L.A. Uh, 
looking for work. She was a documentary filmmaker major, and uh, she's uh, you know, she's about to leap off the cliff into her life. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, two houses for sale in Topanga Canyon. If anybody wants to buy a house, hey, there you go. <laughs> go ahead. Let them know how to get. You know, tell them who your realtor is or whatever. <laughs> no, I mean that's. The, I'm just spouting out all the things that are going on in my life right now. Wow. Oh, and I should tell you that uh, one of the interesting things about the next novel mm-hmm. is I always like to go back in time. So I can do the um, uh, 1970s time period when the show went off the air, and then right. I can go back in time to another time. I think I, I like that kind of going back and forth. So, uh, Except that parallel time in a series was really confusing for a while. That, no, I won't, I won't confuse you, but we <laughs> are going to go back in time, and it's going to be uh, Joan Bennett, Elizabeth's story, mm-hmm. when... We just think it would be really great for when Elizabeth was 16 or 17 in the 20s. Oh, sure. Flapper Liz. Oh, I just think it would be so great because, you know, she was our dowager queen. She was our movie star. Yeah, she was your classic well, movie star. I wanted to ask, and what was it like working with her? Because she was, you know, she was old Hollywood. She was, she was just, she was no newcomer. No, and she was so beautiful. Very classy lady. Uh, truly a lady. In every sense of the word, she was uh, uh, warm, delightful. It was hard for her, though, because she was used to getting a number of takes. Right. Uh, she was used to, you know, being being coddled somewhat. You know, being made to feel at ease by the people around her. And uh, soap opera's not like that. You know, you show up. The show starts. You got to be on your toes. You got to get it all right because whatever you do goes on the air. Right. I know there was so a few I, times she she muffed her lines. I imagine she wanted to take another take, and I wouldn't do it. It'd probably really yeah. upset her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she didn't get upset. She was she, she was very professional and very disciplined. But at the same time, I think it was hard for her. Mm-hmm. I think it was hard for her. it was hard for all of us. But some of us were able to kind of hide it better, you know. Well, and then there were some actors for who, for whom it was not hard at all, like Johnny Carlin. I mean, he just had a ball. He just oh god, there, there, there was nobody. I'm sorry, there was nobody to play Willie but him. <laughs> I know, and he just ripped the scenery apart. I mean, because he was he he was more he was happier and more relaxed when he was acting than when he was not acting. Yeah. So. Um, so does it make you nervous standing next to uh, Reverend Trask, Jerry Lacey? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you two were were like like Dracula and Van Helsing, if if you may, because yes, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Well, actually, the person I liked working with the most was Humbert Allen Mistrato. He and I had a great, you know, the Witch and the Warlock. Right. We had a great time together. Well, somebody in the chat room had asked me to ask you about this, and I'd asked them to go into a little bit more. Um, detail, but they haven't yet. They said, "Ask Laura about the infamous vase incident." Do you have any idea what they're talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, we had, you know, breakaway vases. Uh-huh. That you just tap it and it shatters. Right. It's made out of sugar glass. And so I hit Johnny over the head with it at one point. You're talking about Jonathan Fred? No, it was Willie. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I was mad at Willie, and I can't remember anything about the scene. I don't remember what was going on in the story. I just remember raising this bottle over my head and smashing him in the skull, and it didn't break. Oh, um. and he went, oh, and he <laughs> collapsed on the floor, and uh, we just, uh, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and he had, he, had, he had a cot, he had blood, and he was just, it was normal for the day. Oh, and, wow. th- and then there's that great story that Jonathan Frid was in the coffin, and, and everybody decided to go to lunch, and they didn't tell him, and they put a heavy prop on top of the lid, and he couldn't get um, out. No, I haven't heard that one, but that's great. <laughs> wow, it is great. I wonder if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm really sorry to hear about the death of Dan Curtis, and man, he was a genius. Yes, well, it was a great loss, and Dan did many wonderful things on TV. He was a great talent and a real high energy, sort of terrifying guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he he really knew how to make things happen, and I'm so glad I got to know him, and I'm so glad he gave me the part he gave me. Yeah. So what do you what do you say to each other when you all get together at this festival? I mean, I'm sure some of them probably like Catherine, you see a lot, but like Jonathan, you don't see a lot. And what do you think you're going to talk about? 
same thing everybody talks about. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. How you doing, guys? So good to see you again. Oh, you look great. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, it's you know, time has time falls up like an accordion. Mm-hmm. It yes. feels like yesterday. Right. That's one of the interesting things about being with people again that you did become close to once in your life. It, it doesn't feel like any time's gone by. Right. So we're very relaxed together, and we have a lot of laughs, and and um, we just catch up on each other's lives. You know, how the, how's the family? How's the house? How's uh, what have you been doing? Have you been writing? Have you been have you been in any uh, shows? Right. So, um, well, I, I know we need to we need to be letting you go there. I don't want to hold you up too long, but real quick before we go, just to, and it's going to be taking a little bit of a departure from talking about Dark Shadows. But I had to ask because I'm a huge fan of hers as well. Is it true that you were roommates with Jane Fonda? I was. Uh huh. We went to Vassar together. What was she like? Oh, she was wonderful. She was wonderful. She uh, she was everything you would expect. I mean, she had. Verve and enthusiasm and a great sense of humor, and uh, she's very, very beautiful. And um, you know, she, I have some interesting stories about her, but you know, it's probably not time. But she always had delicious, handsome Yaleys coming to see her, and uh, sometimes she, you know, she she come up to the room and she'd say, let's go into town. And we'd go into town and go into a bar and we'd dance and drink beer. And <laughs> she had a, you know, a, a kind of, uh, not naughty, but uh, risk-taking side to her. Right. And uh, very smart. And even when uh, she was a Vassar, she was already very, very good actress. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, it was, you know, a real joy to, to know her. And I've had some... Uh, a few letters from her over the years. Actually, I sent her a script, and she wrote me back. So uh, um, I have sort of been in contact with her. I mean, she's, she, we certainly think fondly of each other. And, uh, well, I could. I don't even know if you know what this movie is. I could certainly see you playing the Black Queen in Barbarella. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course I know Barbarella. <laughs> wow. Well, so are you going to be, like, having your books for sale there at the uh, festival, or...? Yes, we sell. Uh, uh, well, I won't have any Angelique's descent, sure. but I have the Salem branch, and I have picked uh, photographs and um, uh, the recordings of Angelique's descent, and then um, we've made uh, several recordings over the past years of original Dark Shadows dramas. That's mm-hmm. what I hear. And they're they're for sale as well, and um, um, just a whole slew of things. Oh, you'll be there all three days, right? I'll be there all three days, yeah. I, I really love it. I've, I enjoy seeing it. I mean, a lot of the people have become, a lot of the, you know, it's hard to even call them fans because they've become friends of mine over the years. And right. I look forward to seeing them again. And uh, they sit at my table and help me sell pictures. And I try not to drink too much wine. And <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we sit there until 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. To oh, yeah. About how many people show up. So, uh, uh, and then you know we d- we we do skits and. Uh, Are you going to be involved? They're going to like recreate one of the scripts that was never aired. Yes, Dan I Curtis. will be. Yes, wow. <laughs> Wallace and and Roger Davis and Robert Rodin and I will. Uh, um, are going to they they somehow they found a script that was never produced, and it's probably because it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> We plan to do it for the crowd, and of course Jonathan will give his Shakespearean monologues. And uh, so you couldn't talk. quite talk Jonathan into being in a sketch, huh? <laughs> well, it's the you know the script was those four people. So oh okay, uh, okay. And then um, there's the Collinsport Players, who are a group of fans who are extremely funny and extremely talented, and they always put on a skit, and they ask me to be in it because. I'm such a ham. So. <laughs> That's got to be a thrill for them. I mean, do you like oh, do? Oh no, we have a great time. I mean, we we laugh so much. Are, are you going to be in costume? Uh, yeah. Because they sure had <laughs> oh, the clothes they had there. The, the clothes designer. The name escapes there me. There is a costume uh, contest. 
you know, you have to be there. It's like nothing else. Yeah. I, I guess it's a, it's kind of like Star Trek. Yeah, a lot of people dress up in costume. There are lots and lots of Barnabases. <laughs> In various men. So ladies out there, if you're... <laughs> yeah, there's ladies in, you know, decollete, you know, down showing all the way almost to their nipples and uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wigs and uh, and wonderful makeup. And then, of course, a lot of goth people show up, too. Oh, yeah. yeah of course. In their, in their, their, their style. Uh, they're just all kinds well, I must tell you, one of our shows is hosted by a horror host who recently won the uh, Rhino this year, and she's a witch character, and she met you out of costume at one of the conventions, and she wanted to let you know her name is Penny Dreadful. And she, oh, yeah, I remember that name. There yeah. you go, and she wanted to let you know that her character totally is modeled after Angelique, and in her TV show, she refers to you as her distant cousin. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> she said you're very good with the dolls and the pins, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They seem to work very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on, and especially well, thanks. wonderful. Thank you. Thank especially you. thanks for the uh, lightning that you conjured up here. <laughs> oh, is it still going on? Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. It's like a flash oh. storm outside, but we're okay. <laughs> Glad we got yeah. through this without going off the air, okay? Yeah. So I think it's like starts Friday night, Saturday and Sunday at right. the Burbank Marriott, yes. the airport in Burbank, and uh, we'll all be there. Catherine Lee Scott and Roger Davis and uh, Robert Rodin and Marie Wallace and uh, uh, I hope I haven't forgotten somebody, Jonathan Frid. <laughs> uh, well, I actually have a list here, so let me run through it oh, real quick. Great. Um, oh, great. Jonathan uh, Frid, of course, is going to be there. David Selby. David Selby, I forgot. So I wasn't sure if he was coming. He's coming, right? Yes, That's he great. is coming. And, of course, he was um, Quentin. Uh, yeah, Quentin. Werewolf. And um, Catherine Lee Scott, of course, Maggie Catherine Evans. Catherine Lee Scott, of course. Uh, John Carlin, Roger oh, Davis. John Carlin, right. Jerry Lacey, Marie oh, Wallace. Jerry's coming. Oh, great. Yeah. That'll be great. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is great. You didn't even know her. We got... <laughs> Um, Christopher well, Pennock, Pennock. Oh, Chris Pennock, okay. And Robert Rodan and Robert Cobert and, um... Yeah, Robert Cobert wrote our wonderful theme, our absolutely. music. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll all be there. And, of course, again, it's going to be July 18th through the 20th at the Burbank Airport Marriott Hotel, 2500 Hollywood Way. Um, the Marriott's number is 818-843-6000. And for more information, uh, listeners can visit darkshadowsfestival.com. And you've got a great organizer in Jim. Yes, Jim Pearson, yes. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's actually the light and the life of uh, Dark Shadows at this point. So he's... Uh, he runs it all, and he's he's kept it going, and we're all very grateful to him. Well, it'll be worth it for everybody to come to see those bewitching eyes of yours and see if they do what they did back then, and I bet you they do. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Laura. You have a wonderful okay, night. Okay, thank you. Right. That was really fun. Thanks it was. Thank you. Bye-bye.